This is a video on the Cowboy Tutorial. I made an application called uh, Earl WS that has a bunch of examples of how to use the Cowboy web server. Um, I wanted to get a web socket going, so I decided I would also um, go through the tutorial that Essen has up on its website on nine nines and uh, learn about all the different things you can do with Cowboy. So if you go here, you can see the examples. I'll just run through a little bit here. Um, you can go to 99s, yeah, Cowboy pops up, go to the user guide, and I would suggest reading through it all. There's just no substitute uh, if you're not very familiar with web servers um, and requests and routing and whatnot. Uh, you kind of just got to read through this, um, but I have an example uh, site up there, and it really didn't take all that long. So let's dive into some code here. First thing uh, I would suggest is getting comfortable with Erlang um, dot make. You can download it from his site. You go through the getting started and he shows you where it is. It ends up generating this make file for you and it'll generate your releases. It'll generate cowboy handlers. I think you can do um, the view, uh, list templates maybe. Yeah, it shows you all the things it'll make for you. HTTP handlers, I don't even know what loop is, Cowboy REST handler, um, WebSocket handler, GenFSM, GenServer, Ranch Protocol, Supervisor, all this stuff. It'll generate the file for you. You just tell it the type and the name T equals and the type, which is one of these, and then N equals and the name you want to give it, and it'll generate the file for you. So those are super handy. So And then uh, Erlang will make releases. It'll bootstrap the project for you. It'll bootstrap the release. It'll make the release. It'll run. Um, actually, you got to run console yourself, but super handy, so I highly recommend it. I'm using MacVim, and this is the uh, Nerd Tree plugin. So first, the way you start is the um, the app Erlang module itself. You can see my Erl WS app, and it's uh, application behavior. I've got a couple. Um, Macros, any host is this wildcard matching operator, and no options, just empty list. Uh, and in fact, this should be um, no options as well. So then uh, the way it works is you have routes with a, a host and some paths, and then you in your paths you have your path and the handler and whatever options you want to send to that handler. So, uh, and then you can have to get some constraints. So work, in, uh, work backwards. So you pass, uh, you compile your routes and you pass them to uh, the cowboy start HTTP uh, port, whatever, and then you tell it what your dispatch rules are. Your dispatch rules are routes, a list of tuples that say what the path or the host is and the paths. And then the paths are specified. I've got some specified here. So you can have slash hello, we'll go to the hello handler with no options. And then you can have a slash, we'll go to cowboy static. And in this case, I'm specifying a file, priv file, and where to find the, what application to find the files in or something, and then static, where to find it. You also see one down here, which uh, if you do slash anything, it'll go priv dir. So it'll look in a directory, Earl WS, and look for static. And so anything in the static directory, it will find. Uh, form, we'll go to a form handler, chunk form, uh, and then this gets interesting with constraints. So we've got some binding here. Anything, that, if somebody puts in slash constraints slash something without another slash, it'll get bound, that something will get bound to anything, and it'll go past my constraints handler, and my I've specified in the options that I'm passing to my init that uh, constraints has been met if you just have slash anything. But you can also put in some more, uh, some fancier constraints. Here I've got, I'm binding to an int. I'm binding to three chars, binding to add one optionally. And then I have some constraints. So you can pass in the path, the constraint, or your path, your handler, and your options, or really arguments that are passed to the init function of your handler, or path constraints handler options. So here are my constraints that I've made. They're tuples, and it says what the bind name is. So you can see my binds, bind name is an int three chars, add one, and here's my constraints. An int should be an int, and that's a built-in cowboy constraint. It'll make sure it's an int. And converting from binary or whatever. All the arguments come in as binary. binary. Then here, this 
bound name three chars is bound to a function three chars and this add one is bound to a different function add one. I did two different functions so they do two different things. There's two options you can have for functions. So when we go to that, if we match that path, we have constraint slash an int slash three chars slash add one. If you if it matches that, then it'll go to these constraints and it'll run three chars, which is binary. It'll try and match to three characters and make sure, convert them to a list, make sure they're all chars, which just makes sure that they're within the ASCII range. And if it is, then it'll return uh, true or false. And if it's false, then that path doesn't match. If it's true, it does, and those things will be bound. The other ones is slightly different. So add one is another constraint. Add one says if it finds a number when it finds x and x is an integer, it will actually add, it converts that ASCII the ASCII number of that character, so I don't even know what the ASCII number for one is, but it'll convert that to an integer and add one to it. And so it returns true and the new value. So you can return false or true or true and an updated value. So that's constraints. And you know, I, honestly, I couldn't get this to work, but there's a way to get the host with ellipses and you can um, get host path info and then you can get, uh, or host info and you can get host path info. And uh, just some notes here that this has to come after a slash and um, this one has to be in a string. So that's where you get started in your app file. So you can look that up on the <clears throat> on GitHub on my examples. And I'll just go over a few of the examples. Constraint handler, um, if I had three ways you can get here. Um, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, redo, save that, and close that. Okay, um, there was the anything that could be bound if you go to slash something with no more slashes, and if, if you do, that'll be bound, otherwise it defaults to nothing. And then if you pass the second one with the three constraints, then it'll put those in, um, in int chars and inc int, incremented int. And every time I get back a request, I'm storing it in a new variable because we need to keep these. You might be tempted to just put the underscore here to throw away the result, but cowboy might change the request. You need to keep the result there. And I just, I'll format out a bunch of stuff to see what I'm getting while I was building this. And then I reply with a page built from what I got. So I can tell you if your constraints were met or whatever. And on the site, there is a page that you can go to. And I think it is, oh, was it form? No, it's, um, it's format HTML. And it has some example, uh, constraints ones. So if you go here, um, puke, constraints, uh, is it running? Oh, it's not running, that's why. Let's do this. So I just did, I don't even think I need to do make rel, so let's let's skip make rel and see if that works. Uh, console, and do uh, control A to the front, and then control F to get up here, and control W, control W, control W, and just run that. Ah, no, I screwed it all up, so whatever. We'll just leave it. But anyways, uh, there's that page uh, that you saw that you can go to, and it has some uh, URLs you can just click on to make it, make it easier. So that's constraints, and then I just output what you got, and then there's also um, form handler, and this is where I show uh, doing bodies and URL forms and also looking at the headers. So this takes all the headers and prints them out in a list and gets a bunch of other variables. You can see the different things you can get. And when you run it and then run the web page, it'll show you the values of these variables. And if you've got body, if you've got a body, if you've submitted a form with post, you'll get a body and you can get the query string key values from the body. And then I output those and then you can get the path uh, that you took from the host and then you can get the peer, which is the last computer that sent the request could be a proxy, might be the actual person, and the port that they went to. And then when I send, then I just send all those responses back. And so then you can see whether you put something in with a query string, like a get, use a get method in your form, or if it was a post method in your form. Um, hello handler is a very simple handler. It just um, it just returns uh, a simple response: hello Erlang. Uh, host path handler can get to work, and then finally there's a WebSocket handler. 
getting a WebSocket to work. And so one of the weird things here is you have to, in your init, you have to return upgrade protocol WebSocket, which I guess the server uh, does something to make sure this works with WebSockets. Then you, um, I don't even know, I don't really know what this was. I got this from somewhere. I didn't take time to understand it. But you register yourself. I, I was registering myself as a WebSocket, this process. And then I send myself a message for someone in it is done, it, it can start doing something. And then you can do WebSocket handle to get your content from your WebSocket. So then I just output, you know, what I got and you can reply. And so I'm just replying with text that this is what I got from, from the web page. And then any, um, any messages that are sent to this process will come in on WebSocket info. And so when I sent myself a message, um, message sent from init will go to here after init is done and then that will print it out and it will send it to the um, it will send it to the web page uh, yeah so even uh, even from even from here you can do a reply and send things onto the websocket so I've got another project called Earl Boyds that does more on websockets so I'll go over those a little more and uh, I think that's it uh, there's one more there's chunk handler you can read and write your response in chunks. So here we have handle and we read the body in chunks. We do say body request goes under this function, cowboy request body, and I'm telling it read length one. That doesn't really mean read one byte. What that means is uh, read the first chunk in and if it's longer than what I specified, then break it off. Uh, don't keep going if you're longer than that. So it's kind of your, um, I don't know, it's a guideline for how much cowboy should whether Cowboy should keep going after it gets its first chunk. And then it's recursive, so it just calls this. If it gets more, it'll keep calling it and building up a list of chunks. And it's a little goofy because it reverses afterwards. I was getting clever. And once it's done, it'll return OK, and that'll be your, your last chunk. Um, yeah, that's everything. So that's... Um, that's the example uh, Cowboy web server application that I put up. Um, and uh, go check that out on GitHub and hopefully that'll um, give you some examples that you can use if you're doing a Cowboy web server. Uh, don't bother liking or subscribing because I don't care. <laughs>